We're ready. We are We're ready. Rolling. Welcome back. I am pumped for this episode. Not really, because I'm. I've got my box of tissues. I'm sorted. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, we have people in the room who are currently pregnant, and it's probably not the best story to tell. Oh, damn. That's all right. I didn't even think about we're that. We're going to go through later, later, mm-hmm. later, later. We're going to go through our like birth story. Like we did it up to, and she's yeah, you need tissues too. I get it. <laughs> so we went through our like kind of all the way up and to, right? Like, yep. All the way up and to actually. To the day of. To the day of. Yeah. And then I think something sparked out of me. Anyway, we'll talk about this in like two seconds because we have like, you know, things we need to do in this, in this podcast. We do. Highs and lows before we get into that. Anyway, the subject of it is birth story. That is, you know, that's welcome, it. Welcome back. Welcome back. Tikanis. Tikanis. To Very my good. Greek, <laughs> Greek listeners. Um, highs and lows. I'm going. You go. Yeah, highs and right, lows. Right, I'll take it from here. You really need to be more prepared every single episode. I like to do these ones off the cuff because it's natural. I get it. I don't want to be fake. Okay, I get it. Highs, um, very similar to last week. We've been doing the Yes Please planning, which has filtered into this week, which has been really good. And I think like part of my goals as well, like just been getting to the gym a lot more. So I just feel like we've had a really, really good week. Mm. Um, So that'd be my highs. Lows, I feel like I picked this last week, but damn the weather in Adelaide's yeah, not great so at the bad. moment, and it doesn't help that Kayla and Jay are in, in bloody Queensland, just living it up in twenty five degrees, and I'm here freezing my tits off. Yeah, but you're, but you but they're coming home today, so that's okay. We can all just be sad and cold together. We can all cry together, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with crying together <laughs> that's right. as long as you just embrace it. And also, what you with your first one? You went to the gym at five. No, you got up at five this morning. Yeah, at the gym at six yeah, this morning. Six. Quite tired to be honest, but. Price, well, that's why you, you should have had praise. I'm having praise. Yeah. Um, Over to you, big, my, big boy. My high is talking about being fake. How's my forehead look? What do you guys reckon? Quite yeah. Sh- thank you. So, okay. Not shiny. It looks. <laughs> it looks firm. Is what, <laughs> what I would like. <laughs> I got me Botox. Like I can't even frown at you. I can still frown a little bit. Still frown? How do I feel? Well, they missed a spot. No, they did not. Get a I no. <laughs> So I got my Botox with my, on my forehead. I was very excited about it because I just, yeah, just, I love it. Mm. First time I got it done, hated it. I felt like I had a glab wrap on my head. And then second time, I loved it. Third time, oh, firm is what I 17th feel. 17th time works 17th. charm. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I swear, I always, I literally start joking to Mitch. He was like, what? Because there was a $100 million Powerball last night. And he was like, what would you do? Like if you won $100 million. And I was like, looking at him and I was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be offensive to you. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, I would get a BBL and shake my ass on a yacht in fucking Greece <laughs> no, now. I was like, I would not be in Adelaide. I would be fucking sea lad to get a BBL, get a bo- get all Botox up and be fucking you happy ass. hundred percent. Yes, I would. It'd be the best thing in my life. Anyway, my low is, you know, you know my hot girl shoes that I showed everyone the other day? Well, I stepped in poo <laughs> in my hot girl shoes and I've been so sad about it. And now I'm wearing back onto my, my Brooks. So that was my the most the saddest thing I've ever done in my, like It's quite a this rough week. one and I don't want to sound like, I again, not coming across as ungrateful, but I think everyone goes through the period of like, all right, let's get it off with a stick. Yeah. And then when that doesn't work, it's like, okay, this is either going in the bin or we're yeah, doing yeah, the, some sort of disgusting wash and then do they recover no, after the wash? Yeah. I don't know. With but. our dogs, like they, their bowels are just insanity. Mm. Anyway, oh, that's my low and I was very sad. But not talking about sad things, I had a, I have a very funny story. Yeah, it's pretty But I feel like hilarious. in last episode, which is next week, I think, I feel like you have to come up with a funny story. It has to be you. Why? Because it's just, I want to hear you. We've got a guest for the next episode. Uh, fine. So maybe they can oh, that's come true. up with that's a, the last a funny okay. story. Yeah, true. Okay, fine. My funny funny story. Is it, should we do the pregnancy one? The, like the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't want, okay, this is, this is terrible because I've done it more than once. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really know which one we're talking about here. No, that, talking about pizza or whistle and flute? Which one? Which one was whistle and flute? Do you remember, that was Green Hill Road? <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten that you've done this multiple times. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Oh my god! Tell both. Oh, I don't Give really, the people what they want. First, I don't really remember this, the pizza one because I like I. So this is not an isolated event. When I was when I was pregnant, I would go off food really quickly. Like I'd be like, I'm so hungry. I want freaking eggs. Take me to breakfast, and I'd be so angry. And then when I get there, I'm like, I don't want that. 
I don't want anything to do with that. I don't. Want, I would eat air for the rest of the day. I don't want anything to do with that. And then he would get so frustrated at me because it's like you just fucking rushed us out the house because you were so hungry and then you don't want anything. And I'm like, no. And then I complain that I'm feel dizzy within two seconds. So then this morning, one morning, we get up and I was I was in my I'm starving, but I felt a bit off and I was like just probably like morning sickness or whatever. And then we get in the car, hop on down. And I, in the car, I was like, I feel so gross. Like, I'm so hungry. I must be, the, you know, the, whatever. Get to breakfast, food comes out. I was like, get that as far away from me as possible. Like, <laughs> take it fucking back. Like, I, I'm so, I was angry at the waiter for even putting it in front of my face. Like, I was like, that's disgusting, even though I ordered it. It's, it was just, egg, it was beautiful eggs on toast. It was amazing. But I was like, yuck. So I didn't even, didn't even sniff it. I didn't want anything to do with it. So, I pushed it to the side, Mitch ate, and then get in the car. And I was like, no, Mitch, like, I feel really sick. Like, there's something's wrong. And then he's still laughing. And we're driving up Green Hill Road. And I was like, like sitting in my car, like just closing my eyes. Obviously, I was a passenger. And I was like, just Mitch, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. And he was like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I, like do you want me to stop? And I was like, no, just get me home. And I was annoyed at him for driving slow. <laughs> I just not even in general, just just for life. And then I was started like he he goes over and he was going about sixty k's now, like the speed limit. And I turned over, I was like, "Fucking pull over!" And I was like, I was screaming, I was like, "Pull over right now, pull over right now!" So he like crosses lanes, pulls over, like slams on his brakes. I was pissed off at him for that. And then I, as I I opened the door, I turned around and I projectile vomited all down Green Hill Road. Like I like. <laughs> It was, I don't even, I didn't eat anything. So I don't know what the fuck I vomited. And I, I was so, so sick that I like, oh, after, after have vomiting everywhere, I look up, vomit down my face, vomit down all my top, my legs, everything. I look up and it, it was Saturday, it was Sunday morning, by the way. Just, so this guy, <laughs> this poor guy who was standing maybe five meters away, <laughs> he looked at me and he, he literally like, he looked at me and looked at the farm and just like shook his head like, you drunk idiot. Like, and I was like, <laughs> I'm so fucking pregnant. Like, I could, I felt so bad that I had literally, I don't even know if it was, I don't know where it was. I can't remember. I don't know if it was in front of his house or something. It wasn't in front of his no, house because no, it was no. on Green Hill Road. But he looked at me with the most like look of disgust. And as, I, like, as I'm telling this story, I do, do remember with the pizza story, same thing happened. <laughs> Went down to dinner. I felt disgusting. Didn't want to eat pizza. I, I think I ate one piece and I was like, yuck. So I got in the car. I said to Mitch, I feel really sick. And at the t- this, this second time, this is the second time, I was wearing these leggings and they were really tight on my stomach, like really cutting in. And I said to him, like, I need to take them off. So I was halfway in the car. I took off my leggings, but just put them, just put them beside me. <laughs> like they were, I was, they were on, but they were like below my bum sort of thing. So I was just wearing under in the car. And because I was so fucking big and pregnant, I was like, it's just, it was an awful situation. He was crying, laughing in the car. He goes, put your pants back on. I was like, oh God, <laughs> like, oh. I can't do it. I can't breathe. So too bad. Anyway, I started to feel like I was going to vomit and I was like, fucking pull over. So he pulls into this random side street. I open the car door. I tried to get out, realizing my pants are half off. And I tried trip on <laughs> trip while spewing. And then I look up, there's someone pulling into their driveway <laughs> as I'm vomiting. So I reverse my like fat ass into this car, having leggings halfway down my legs. And I was like, I'd vomit everywhere. And I look over at Mitch and I was like, this is your fault. <laughs> so angry. I was furious because I was like, and he was like, what, like, what would I do? And I was like, you made me pregnant. I'm sick. And I was so pissed off. Anyway, I feel like that was, that was not I the only I think in the last one, the best part was like when they pulled into their driveway because you were vomiting on someone's front lawn. <laughs> no, it was the front lawn. It was like the, the street. Like, yeah, the medium, like the medium yeah. strip in front of their house, basically their front lawn. As they pulled in, I yelled at Leah, Leah, they're home. Pull up your pants. <laughs> It just looks back at me like, I can't. It was just so funny. It was so bad. Like, I got caught in the worst situation. And I still couldn't put my pants back up the whole I don't time. Think the whole ride came back. They um, didn't. I think they just came completely off <laughs> after that. It was just it was, fuming. That was funny. That was such my, my, my tip. My whole pregnancy was that. Mm. It was, that can't was, wait to do it all over no, again. Not after this story. <laughs> um, let's get into it. I think I'm going to cough one second. You need a little... <coughs> little... Little what? 
a little bit of praise. So I'm having praise so I can just get hyped for this story because it's not the best, but... Cue the waterworks. Mm-hmm. No, I think it'd be good. I think it'd be great. Just kidding. Just kidding. Don't you hold up. You do. You be good. You're going to be amazing. You'd be perfect. Well, just You'd talking to the people in the room. Yeah, literally. FYI. Literally, I can... And you at home. You got this. Yeah, you got this. <laughs> um, No, I don't... Like I said earlier, I don't know if it was like episode four or whatever that I was like, when whatever we were talking about, I think it was my four. parenting or whatever. Yeah. I was like, nah, I'm not ready to talk about it, blah, blah, blah. And I think the reason why I wasn't, because it's just like, it's one, a blur. Mm-hmm. But two, I think I was just like, no one will really care. Like, it yeah. doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. But I did an Instagram post the other day and I'll just quickly get it up while we're here. And it was, I wrote about like... Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. How like just it has like changed me as a human. Like, yeah. like it's just been, I don't remember the first six months. I don't know. I, like all these things I wrote, all these like things about like, you know, trying to get in, what felt like my old, it been quote unquote life, felt like a alternate overwhelming universe that I don't know or remember being in. Like, do you know what I mean? Like thinking like, we used to meal prep every single Sunday. We used to do every single meal. We I used to cook all day. I used to be yeah. like, have all the time in the world. And just that feels like an literally like, like stranger things upside down. Like, do you know what I mean? It feels like an alternate universe that I'm like, how do I get back into doing that? I don't know. I don't, like it's just, and like we said, we were doing dinners and we, we've yeah. gotten to the gym. We had our goals, blah, blah, blah. We've been doing really well. But the comments of that post where there was like, I can't explain how many, like there was 130 comments and then plus my DMs, which was like Mm -hmm. filled with people who aren't, you know, comfortable to write something in public with people saying the exact same thing. Yeah. Being like, I went through this, I did this, I felt like this, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, oh, like maybe, maybe, maybe it wasn't like just me. Do you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like maybe that, and I think that's, I think it was really, it's kind of cool to maybe talk about because everyone's journey is different, but mm-hmm. some people are like, well, why is mine like this? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, why do, yeah. I, why, why do we do that? So yeah. I think it'd be really cool just to go through maybe some Share feels. Some, some wisdom, I think. Yeah. And just Because I'm wise now. An alternate I do have my tissues, but I'm wise. <laughs> That's it. But maybe let's, because I reckon we went all the way up until <clears throat> having a, so we had a C-section for anyone who d- maybe didn't listen to the earlier um, episode. Four. episode. Um we chose to do that because mm-hmm. my back is wrecked and I just had a bit of nerves about that. I had a real, what's the word? Fear. Mm-hmm. That, because my, my friend had um, the exact same back issue as me and she had a had her baby um, vaginally and she um, herniated discs on the way out and she'd had to have ended up having had to have surgery and blah 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 yeah. so that just basically terrified me back surgery back surgery sorry For clarity yeah yeah and then that terrified me so much that I was like mm, no I don't want to do that and then I I thought I just thought that would be the most calm option because mm-hmm. of because of my back and it was that was 100% the and reason. Just for clarity as well, you just you don't have a sore back. Like you have bulging discs yeah, yeah, yeah. and arthritis. Yeah, and <laughs> nerving damage and all that fun so you stuff. You actually have back issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that, but that in itself, like I was really nervous about that getting pregnant. I almost yeah. like fucking oh my, that was the worst thing ever. Because I was so scared. But funnily enough, pregnancy actually like helped my back and helped mm. it now, even. Yeah. I swear. Yeah. But we ended up doing that. But anyway, at 38 weeks, I ended up, um, Gigi ended up turning. So it was like spine on spine, mm-hmm. which is like apparently the worst for labor. Like you can have a back labor and apparently it can last for 24 hours and whatever. Um, anyway, but that was our decision. We made it yeah. great. We were like, we were happy, happy days. Um, let's like, can we just talk about like, because I feel like you not having carried the child. Mm-hmm. How did you feel when you like saw her get picked up? Like, did you, firstly, did you see anything happen? No, I tried, to, I tried to avoid eye contact. It's pretty gross. <laughs> so this is, yeah. Um, All you can hear is like, meh, and like just being cut open. And then I feel like it smells like, like, <laughs> it smells like, like burning. Yeah, it smells like burning. I smell like that burning away. rubber or I don't know, something. It's weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. Male perspective probably getting different with um, once you have second, third, fourth, whatever child. Yeah. First one, I think it was a bit weird. It's like you don't know how to feel having not, carried the child and I think yeah. I touched on this in episode four but there's not an instant bond yeah like it's obviously a very like a, a special moment and like you I think you naturally cry like most parents yeah. Yeah, will yeah, yeah, cry yeah. like we were crying yeah you had a little tear because it was beautiful but again it's like oh like it, it sounds really weird but like piecing together that 
this is what has been in your stomach. Yeah. Growing. And they look disgusting. <laughs> they look all like nine manky months. and bloody. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it was, I don't know, it's a bit weird. It was obviously beautiful, but then it was like, yeah. oh, like it's a bit of like a oh shit, like this is a reality as well. Yeah. As it sounds very silly again, but like I don't know. It's real in that moment. It's yeah. very, very real. So it's like, oh wow. And then obviously they come out, well, in our case, crying. Yeah. I just assume most cases. Yeah, but yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like yeah. they come out looking like a dove baby, like, <gasps> hello, yeah, I'm, I'm clean and nice yeah. and like, I yeah, smell they come out delicious. Like, screaming. Yeah. So. <laughs> and they don't stop. Yeah. So. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But I, um, I think in that, in that moment, like, I go from, from having a C section or whatever, like, I really wanted to, I know this is going to sound gross, I really wanted to pull her out. Like, I really wanted to do that. And he, <laughs> Which was like, stop it. You don't want to do that. You're already like, I was like, no, I want to. I yep. want to do the whole thing. So if we if we ever have a second child, I'm going to go ham on like water birth. <laughs> I want to do everything. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% I'm doing it because it'll be the last chance that I can just send help just be please. you know it'll be so fun <laughs> she didn't rage just like what the fuck yeah I'm with you rage <laughs> yeah. but anyway <laughs> I, I'm just pumped about it but anyway I that was that was probably like a, like a reality check moment because when we heard her cry I was like I'm just sitting there can't feel anything and I'm like okay mm-hmm. and then they pull her over and put her on me and I'm like what the hell like that is that whole, how did you squish that far and how, like she was quite big yeah. Not like she was like 3.1 kilo. It wasn't huge, but like also yeah. like you just feel like they're not that compact. Mm. Like how did you fit in my stomach? It's so crazy. weird. Um, but maybe maybe we'll go into like post that So from moment. there, yeah, from there, what happened? I don't remember fucking anything, but we went upstairs. Yeah. After all that. Then we were... In the room. And I'm really, like, timings of this is really confusing to me because I've got photos in my phone of having heard on my chest at, yeah. like, 1 p.m. Mm-hmm. But we had her at 7.30. So I don't know, like, in my mind, I don't know what happened. Like, yeah. in between those hours sort of thing. Yeah. Anyway, I reckon, and it's so such a blur because obviously I'm, like, trauma dumped it. <laughs> but we were in the room and I was on the bed and... Mitch was Mitch was standing, obviously, and Gigi was in the bed next to me, like in her little, little like bassinet. capsule bassinet thingy. Yep. I Mitch was like, right, everything's done. You're awake. You're happy. Gigi's been fed. Did we get you? Did you finger feed her? That's some colostrum. She had just yeah, something like that. I can't remember what happened, but because I, I was still a bit like out of it. So when I had kind of like come to better, um, Mitch was like, right, you have not eaten, you've not drank, you've not had anything. Do you want me to go get your coffee? And I was like get me a donut firstly. But I was like, <laughs> yes, I want a coffee. Um, so he walked out the room, went downstairs and I was just like laying there and just like kind of looking at her on my phone, calling mom or whatever. And then like she started making this gurgling noise and I was like, look over and I was like, that's weird. And then she kept doing it and I was like, that's just odd. I don't know. But I couldn't move because I couldn't move through my leg because I couldn't, I couldn't stand up. I couldn't do anything. And I was like, oh, I don't really like that. And then she started making this like weird noise and I was like no I don't like that so I called the nurse and then she kept making it and I was like because I, I couldn't see her properly so I called it again and called it again because I did it three times it's an emergency call so me <laughs> they ran and then they took her straight away you go take over <laughs> I didn't think it was that, that like straight away but um well they they, they came in yeah so they came her. in and she was basically just because um she had like the worst form of reflux, effectively. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Sim- remember. The name is like gastrointestinal. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Um, essentially, because I had fed her, she was so with the reflux babies, which we later found out, you're obviously meant to be upright and then make sure you digest whatever. But essentially, she was like choking on the food. Yeah. Um, and I was downstairs, so obviously wasn't there for this bit. But yeah, because she was like, you're not meant to be on your back straight away. So then, obviously, had to roll her over. Yeah. Tap her back. Yeah. Um but was just st- struggling to digest food. But she also, that day, wasn't taking a lot of food. Yeah. Which usually, like, again, not from our experience, but from most experiences, you, the, the baby should be latching and, Trying, and eating and et cetera, et cetera, in the yeah. first few hours, whatever it is, first day, um, which she wasn't. So they just wanted to do more tests on her, essentially. So They didn't like the... Because she was gurgling and sent me like sort of choking on her feet, they didn't like the colour she had turned. So I was like, because because I couldn't do anything, I didn't know what they were doing. So I kind of just all rushed in, looked at her. They said to me like, not happy with the colour. She, she's just 
kind of gone. We want to take her to nursery. We'll bring her back. I was like, okay, what the fuck? So then Mitch comes back and was like, where's Gigi? And I was like, oh, I don't know what just happened. Like, I just, that was the most like, that happened in 20 seconds. And then we ended up going down to nursery, get put in a wheelchair, going down to nursery, <laughs> Um, having a success. They were like, it's all good. Don't stress. Like, we just want her just to, she just wants to get back to the normal color. We'll bring her back. It's all fine. And I was like, okay, great. Went back to the room. Two, three hours later. And I was like, where is she? Like, What's happening? Then they were like, we need to admit her. And I was like, okay. But first of all, we weren't insured. So we had no insurance. <laughs> and I was like, ah, what do you mean? Anyway, they were like, we need to know if you can, like, if you're okay to admit her because every day it's true that I think it was, $1,800 a day. And we were like, God damn it. <laughs> like, holy shit. Anyway, I ended up like, while not being able to feel my legs, ringing my insurance company, being like, I, like I'm insured because I had top hospital, but I still didn't have, like, I didn't know if Gigi had hospital cover because she wasn't born yet. Anyway, ended up being luckily, luckily, because I had that hospital cover, Gigi was covered. And I was like, oh my God, thank goodness. Because then we, we would have just had to be transferred to an, a different hospital, which would have been a nightmare. Just, just because I didn't want to get her in a car. But, when they admitted her, um, they like the nurses were incredible. They were so lovely. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of what kind of happened after that? After they admitted her, then what? So I think at, at first they just wanted to do more tests, work out what it was. Obviously, you can't work out if you have reflux just by looking at you. Obviously, you can hear for certain things, but you need yeah. to consume water or milk or whatever. Um, so once admitted, again, a bit of a blur for me too, but I think. Yeah. I mean, this was almost two years ago. Um, they just wanted to do more tests. And and once you're admitted to the nursery, I think it's really hard to get out of the nursery. Yeah. Like in, in a really good way. I don't yeah, mean that's a bad thing. Sure as in like, like, they want to make sure that, yeah. and for every reason, like your baby's 100% healthy. Yeah. Because essentially by the time you leave the nursery, you're going home. Mm. So it's a big thing to be out of hospital care, I guess. So from there, I think... They just monitored her in a little cubicle thing and then we tried to feed more over the next few days, whatever it was. I think it's day four or five, they wanted to do what is called Barnum swallow test. Bar barium swallow. Barium yeah. swallow test, which is to work out reflux. So essentially they send with milk or water, whatever it was, some dye down, they consume yeah. it and then they can basically see it. Like it's like a skin. Yeah. You can see it and come I up think straight away and like I was literally in the room watching it and it was like straight away. Yeah. So it's then effectively you have to work out plans for like... How do you combat that? Do yeah. you make the milk thicker? Do you make the milk heavier? Do you make, um, yeah. like, there's all these medications and things you can yeah, use. Yeah, and I think, like, when I when I was, like, literally talking to my therapist about this, they were like, she was like, what's, like, a time in, in the hospital that you were so, that you feel like it was hard? And I was like, that test was the worst. I had, that was so awful. Because of COVID, there was only, like, one parent in the room. And that we had to wear these big lead suits sort of thing. Like, it was like, what was that? It was like a jacket, but it was like made out of lead. Is that I right? It was or because not? of the, the skin. Yeah, because of, so, but, so you had to wear these it. things. And I For just had had my C-section. So I couldn't hold the lead plus hold her and put her on a bed. So Mitch had to do it. And they kicked me out of the room. So I sat outside the room and she was losing it. But because she was cold, but I had no idea. So I sat outside the room, like, <laughs> like just sitting there waiting, 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 like a little dog. <laughs> like, where's my job? I could, all I could hear her was screaming. And I was like waiting. Then Mitch walked out and I was like, like is she okay? And he was like, oh yeah, she's fine. Like she was just, she was just cold. That's all. And I, like, she'd be quietened down. She was great. But I was like, for me, that was fucking traumatizing. Just waiting outside the room being like, what is happening? What is happening? Nothing. She was like, ended up being okay. Yeah. Um, but with that test, obviously there was like some other things that they like had found and we were dealing with that with as well as the reflux, which was like, which was kind of nice to just know something, like instead of being like, why? Like what's yeah. happening? What, like, I want to, I want to take her home. Why? Um, and then there was, they had put her, we had, we had gone back into the room. That was all done. Yeah. So I think the thing is when they go into um, the nursery at, Ashford, where we were, mm -hmm. effectively you're either put on a finger or a foot monitor. So yeah. they measure heart rate, um, breaths, or like on the oxygen, monitor, yeah. basically, oxygen, whatever. So the problem was once refluxing or yeah. the, the water or whatever coming up, effectively what it's called is it, like she was desatting, yeah. which just means a desaturation of oxygen. Yeah. So essentially, if you hold your breath, yeah, oh, I still don't understand how you that. have less yeah. oxygen coming in. So effectively, yeah. 
the number out of 100 would be low. It could be like 95 for that second, yeah, if that I makes think, sense. I don't really know if that's like, I don't know if Again, that's not, not right a or right. Yeah, I don't quite understand it, but yeah. Um, so effectively, every time she'd drink and then be put down, she would deset. And it's like, you don't want to be desetting, obviously, because you want your your blood to have oxygen in it. Yeah. Um, so you're functioning. Um, so we just had to monitor things like that, essentially, and then work out, okay, why is she desetting? And then obviously paired it with, okay, it's the and, food, it's the reflux, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and not that every time she would deset or she'd do, it wouldn't be just once, it'd be like, you know, five, ten times an hour. But every time she wouldn't, every time she would do it, it was like crushing because it was one more day that we'd have to stay in hospital because they would only, they wanted her to do 48 hours or 40, 48 hours. Yeah. So, but going back to that a little bit, so obviously had a bit of a throat issue, whatever, we won't get into it, but yeah. was contributing to it as well, yeah. which was so fun and who was itself, but effectively, to leave hospital, we had to do a sleep study test, yeah. which means you do, I think it's an eight hour test, yeah. essentially four hours on oxygen, like yeah. literally like babies breathing with oxygen or yeah. human, whoever's doing the test yeah. on oxygen and monitoring their oxygen levels in their blood. In their sleep, yeah. um, and then four hours without. And effectively, you, you're not meant to do that. If you hold your breath, it's a bit different, yeah. but when you're not holding your breath and your oxygen levels are going down, there's obviously something wrong. Yeah. Um, and some babies go home with a little oxygen tank, essentially. Yeah. So effectively, we had to do the sleep study. I think it was like almost a week, like a week in. Yeah. Like she was probably a week old and we did this sleep study. It also takes a while to get the sleep study. because there's was, literally like it was one like that or was two. the second week. So after that test was... It there's was... one or two that... Uh, in a, in Adelaide, yeah, which is it yeah. sounds so crazy, yeah. But like, if another baby's doing a sleep study, yeah, your baby's bad. not, yeah, like it's crazy. You got to wait the next night. Do you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. crazy like that. But anyway, we had to wait for that. So that happened, and then they wanted to see. I think it was like you're going to say two days without desetting, hours. but the test went really well. So she didn't have any desets during the test, or yeah. maybe it was one. But prior to that test, because she kept desetting, kept refluxing, kept like you know, every time we'd feed her, it would just be you know either projectile vomiting or like a holding her breath sort of thing. So Yeah. And then it was a it was a weird one. It was like until we can get the test, we're just gonna put her on oxygen. Yeah. Just to make sure she doesn't desat. Yeah. So Yeah, and this is the thing. Like I said, like once you're in the nursery, again, I'm all for this. It's so I'm not best. against it, but yeah. I'm just saying it's harder to get out. And they're obviously gonna do everything in their like their nature yeah. to make sure that this baby's hundred hundred percent healthy. So yeah. and, I think it's, and this, that's not overkill, that's not the right word, but like they'll do everything. Do you know what I mean? So like yeah, yeah, yeah. they had to put on oxygen just to make sure Let's not deset. Let's yeah. work out why we're desetting, et cetera, et cetera. I think there was a few bits there, like in the first four to three or four days. I remember we went, we fed her, we walked out to go. I think we had that physio appointment or whatever it was, in because it was still the, on the fifth day or whatever, we were still allowed to stay. And then we came back and as we walked in, I re literally remember the nurses were like circling her and then... I was like, what are you doing? And they had put her on oxygen and I was so not ready for that. I was like, what are you doing? And I remember having to be like, I'm going. I walked straight out the room and had like a panic attack by myself in the hallway. And then a nurse comes by. I was like, are you okay? And I was like, no. Nope. Like, <laughs> I remember her like just patting my back and I was like, I can't go back in there. And she was like, you have to, like blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I felt like leaving right then and there. I was like, I don't understand why they did that. But then I walked in and the nurse was like, we had to for this reason, for this reason. And then like made me feel better about it because I just wasn't ready. I had no idea mm -hmm. they were going to do that. But then once he was on, I was I felt more comfortable because I was like, well, at least that's helping her. We know that she's not going to you know, have any issues. But I remember our pediatrician walked in and was like, she's going to go home on oxygen. Like 100% she will. Mm -hmm. And we were like, what the fuck does that mean? Like what? I had no idea. Like you hadn't, we were both like, okay, what do we do? What do we do about that? Like, what does that mean? But I think that we were just so like spun that we had no real like understanding of that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've bounced around a little bit, but... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I think until we obviously did that sleep study, yeah. that she had to go on oxygen, which is that's what it was. Yeah. And then our pediatrician, Sanjay, just explained like, okay, if she doesn't pass the sleep study, essentially, you can't stay here forever. Yeah, literally. That's just a certain amount of beds and et cetera. And like she's getting healthier yeah. with oxygen, essentially. Not that she was unhealthy, so to speak, but not desetting with oxygen. So needed to do the test to basically go from there. Then from the, so she aced the test. Which, which was, was insane. And he, even almost the, a bit confusing. Yes. Because it was like, we, yeah. not what they had expected. So then yeah. she aced the test and then got better in the next like couple of days or whatever it was, but then like would have almost like 
one DSAT in, in 48 hours, but then the criteria to leave was essentially like no DSATs. Another 48 hours, yeah. With, yeah, no DSATs within 48 hours, essentially. Yeah. Um, so I think we we're there for an extra week or whatever it was until we achieved that, yeah. essentially. Um, but then we left without oxygen, which was amazing. Yeah, and he, he is, even he was like that pretty like he was like my like he goes my heart tells me I remember him saying this like because I was like did she really have to like what does that mean blah blah I was like crying to him and he was like look my heart's telling me to tell you that she's a she's not going to go home on oxygen but my my brain and everything that she's doing is telling me that she will and I was like okay and then after he was like that was like I was not expecting those sleep results like that was that's really positive and I was like okay like and then I swear from that it just like everything just went, went up. Like we were like, every day we walked in there, we we're like, morning everyone, like, let's go. And like we we're making jokes. And it was like, it was, it started to be a better like yeah. sort of environment for us. Maybe because it just kind of, we needed time to like fathom what the hell was going on. It was on. also a bit of a, a weird one. Like it was an unknown. If you have a C-section, typically you're in hospital, like admitted to hospital for about five days, five yeah. nights, whatever it is. So once, I think we were there for four nights, maybe five days. <laughs> After that, essentially... We had we had to check out like yeah. we had to go home. There was no they, there was no ability to board because people are like why don't you just board at the hospital? But like, you can't like you can't in we that were, ward. There, there wasn't so yeah. um, we had to leave because the hospital needs a bed for another plan C section yeah. or yeah. in the maternity baby, ward yeah. another baby. So we essentially didn't, we didn't get kicked out, but we had to leave and then like we couldn't board like you said. So I think after five days, essentially we went home yeah. and Gigi didn't. So then fast tracked. Essentially, I think it was. Three weeks on the dot, I think it was 21 days yeah. later, like yeah. she was 21 days old, is when we effectively took her home yeah. after all the testing. Um, there was without, a few days in there that were like, today's going to be a day when we get there. Yeah. And they'd be like, sorry, she desatted. And we'd be like, like, what a knife. Like, that was just awful. I think the last week that probably happened twice or whatever it I was. It was the third, third time we took her. Like, I think it happened yeah, twice. Think, <laughs> we were meant to go home after like two weeks, essentially yeah. blew out to three weeks yeah. because, again, testing or whatever. But yeah, it was. It was the. I think the worst part of that was essentially we didn't know when we were taking her home. It'd like we'd go there for a week straight, being like, "All right, today's the day." Like the yeah. house is prepared, the cars prepared, whatever. Um, and then we get there in the morning, like, "No, nah, no, sorry, yeah." We'll so like, essentially, like, yeah, that went for about a week. But yeah, I don't know. I think it was a bit of it was a bit of a weird. One. Obviously, very different birth experience to a lot of people. Yeah, some people would have the same journey, and there were other um, women and children in the nursery with the yeah. exact same. Yeah. situation, which is, you know, yeah. was nice, but nice to bond with other people yeah. and be able to talk to people. But I guess a different experience in the sense that we went home after five days, Gigi didn't. Mm. But then- and we would, like, we would, the, the fine line as well was we were going back and forth for feeds. I think we we're going there five times a day, whatever three, it was. Three, th- four, 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 four feeds. Four times a day. Yep. Four feeds, that's right. Yeah. Um, and we live 20 minutes away from the hospital. So we'd literally get in the car in the early morning, get in the car, drive, get there, feed, cuddle, whatever. Like hopefully she didn't yeah. reflux or vomit or whatever. If she didn't, we'd pop her down, like hike her bed up and then we'd leave, we'd get home, we'd quickly eat something. We'd maybe like I would jump into work because I needed to get my head out of that. I would be like trying to express while, you know, typing my computer and then it would like tick over. Like we only had like an hour and 20 yeah. minutes at home and then we'd get in the car, yeah. go feed, cuddle, whatever, come back, do the same thing. And then like we'd go from, I remember being like, we'd go to my mum's for dinner and then from there we'd go straight to the hospital because it was closer and then hospital straight home. Like, Um, yeah, that was insane. I think it was a bit of a weird one and, you know, whatever, people give us shit for it. But like, I think unless you're in the situation, like it's a weird one because you go there and like you're saying like you're there four times a day. Again, we couldn't board, so we couldn't physically stay there. Um, There isn't a restriction on visiting hours essentially for us or the nursery. But once you're there and you're fed and essentially Gigi sleeps and as most people that have kids would know, newborns sleep for yeah, a long hours. time, hours a day. Yeah. Um, the nurses would be like, Leah, you need to go home. Yeah. Or just go have a coffee or just, you know what I mean? Because it's like in the, in that time, like you obviously need to be mentally and emotionally as stable yeah. as possible. So yeah, there's remember, no point sitting there yeah. 24-7 and being like, I'm just going to sit here and cry. Like that's not Yeah, well, that's what I was doing. And the nurse was like, you are making it so... Like, she's like, I don't want to be like pushy, but you need to leave. And I was like, I don't want to leave. And she was like, not that you need to leave, you need to go, but like, you need to know that she's safe here. Mm. Like, you need to know if she cries, I'm there in two seconds. The best care possible. And she's like, like, if she moves, we know. Like, if she instantly, like, she blinks, we know about it. Like, she's not 
you're not leaving her in an empty room. You've, there's, yeah. there's, there's people who come in and out of this room all the time. She's safe. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, but I was like, I'll be back. And she's just like, because remember, I remember how she told us not to come overnight. I was like, I'll be back at midnight. And she's like, if you fucking come at midnight. Like, and I was like laughing. She's yeah. like, please like get some rest. And I was like. And I reckon we did Ugh. a couple, like a, not a couple. I think we did a lot of the midnights, but we just. After that, she was like, do not come back. Yeah. I think the next feed was like 4 a.m. And then the one after was 7, 7 or 8 a.m., yep. whatever it was. So like, I don't want to see you back here for 4 a.m. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you need some sleep. And then I'll see you in the morning if that's what you're going to do. But yeah. yeah, anyway. She was very kind. Like, she knew, she knew, knew obviously, but if you want to do that, you can. But I want to let you know, like, she is safe and you're okay to, like, yeah. to leave and come back. And like, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's not a She was really helpful. because like, like in good hands. Yeah. Like, sometimes she would, the, you know, the, the pediatrician would come in and look at her chart and be like, mm, this, 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 and then walk out. And then we'd be like, yeah, what was that? Like, what did, what did that mean? And the nurse would be like, okay, let's, like, sit down. Let, let me explain it to you in a way yeah. that you might understand, which was so helpful because I was like, I don't know what a DSAT is. I don't yeah. know what this means. I don't know what that little, like, little mark on that means. I have no idea. Like, yeah. They're like, oh, she put on 10 grams. I'm like, is that a lot or is that not? Yeah. And they're like, okay, well, let's how explain it. That's like, actually, yeah, really good point. The other thing is like newborns lose weight. So yeah. their, their birth weight is like, let's say three kilos. Then like after a week, they might go down to 2.8, 2.9, whatever it is. But yeah. then after that period, the aim is to be going back up yeah. in weight. Essentially, the other thing keeping us there was her birth weight was like 3.2. Let's so say 3.1 3. something. Yeah. Let's say 3.2. She went down to, I think, 2.7 and effectively wasn't going back up yeah. to her birth weight. So I think it was literally only like three weeks because later. Because she couldn't keep anything down. That she like, achieved her birth weight, which is, again, like another progressive measure that yeah. every night they'd be like, all right, she's put on 50 grams. And then she'd go back down. And it's like, yeah. do you know what I mean? So it's like a whole like process that you need to work through. Yeah, like if she didn't desat, she didn't put on weight. Yeah. So it was like, fucking, just fucking put on. And then I remember one, one day we got there and she put on 120 grams and we like... The nurse gave me a hug. Like she was like so celebratory. She was like, yes, Gigi, how excited. Yeah. It was, we were so celebratory of that. Like we couldn't believe it because it was like 10 grams, 12 grams. Like mm. we're like, fuck, just come on. Yeah. Like, And I like while our birth story was, again, not great. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's definitely not. It wasn't life-threatening and it wasn't, you know, like a lot of other experiences that people yeah. go through. So yeah. it was the thing is tough for us. but Tough for yeah. us. But the thing was pediatrician was always like, it's fine. Like you're going to be here two, three weeks. That's it. And then we just yeah. need to work out the test and then she's going to go home. Yeah. And then whatever she has, she's going to grow out of it in a year or two. Yeah. She'll be fine. Yeah. And it won't affect her livelihood, won't affect anything. So, yeah. but again, as new parents, you freak out about everything. You oh, worry about yeah. everything. Yeah. So it's like, at, yeah. what do you mean? But yeah, I think that's just like important to remember. Like there's always perspective and yeah. it being your new baby or your yeah. newborn, it's your everything. But I think without the team at Ashford, you know what I mean? Like, oh where my god, they taught us everything. Do you remember? Like, and I loved, I loved them specifically. Like, shout out to Ashford because they were like, they would speak to you and me. Like, do, do yeah. like they kind of they were like, all right, oh, I'm great. a dad, come and sit. Like, yeah. let's talk about this rather than be like, just talk to me because I was like, I'm, yeah. mate, I'm in another planet right now. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I couldn't string a sentence together because I'm so like crazed out right now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's nice that like, like and that they let us both kind of yeah. be there. Mm-hmm. I loved them. They were, and they like taught us how to bath her properly, like in that yeah. thing. Like yeah. they were just the best, best they humans. Good. Like they, they were, were so lovely. It was also a bit of a weird one. I think you touched on this a little bit throughout the story, but like it was during the middle of COVID essentially. So fast, we can only compare to what we know. So Anna, Kayla's yeah. baby was born four years ago now, but born Everyone could go to the hospital. This is obviously pre-pandemic. You literally, big Everyone, great family, like up. <laughs> 10 to 15 people in the room, no limits on visitors, whatever. Yeah. Then we have Gigi and it was uh, like the mother plus, what's it, what do they call it? Like, support person. Support person yep. can go, which is obviously me, the dad. Yeah. Um, but that's it. And you can't alternate support people when we had Gigi anyway. Yeah. So it's not you like couldn't. your mum could come or dad or anyone. So especially, effectively. Especially in the nursery because of how like, High risk. Yeah, you yeah, can't, just you walk can't in come in. If you're kids. sick, you're not allowed in. Like, yeah. you need to do a rat test. To, well, you had to do a rat test anyway to get into the hospital. But, yeah. like, yeah, it's a little bit more high risk in the nursery yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, but essentially, no one could come. And I think that was another big part of like, it was a bit of a, I don't want to say cold pregnancy, but it felt weird. And then it we were going it, home it after so five days and yeah. having dinner with everyone. But it's, it was weird. It's like they know you've had a baby, but they don't know your baby. Yeah, that's the we weirdest were like, feeling ever. We're like, she's so cute. She does this. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, oh, 
Like you, because you can't, they couldn't. And you don't want it, you can't be bitter at them because it's not their fault. But yeah, it's like, you don't even it. fucking know my baby. Yeah. And it's like, but you're so like caught up yeah. in emotion. It's not like you're extra angry at yeah. them, but it's like, it was 100%. a bit of a weird one. And then obviously we went home after 21 days and then everyone meets Gigi. Yeah. And it was just like, I think then obviously as well, like a massive breakdown of emotions because it's like, yeah. you've known this child for three weeks and they're literally just meeting. Like, yeah. Uh, that's pretty rare. I don't think that happens very often. Maybe a lot in other countries where people move away from home, but in our tight knit little family, I think that was a bit weird. And then recently, Kayla just had Jacks again, and again, polar opposites back to what Anna essentially. Yeah, like, same thing. Like, but we. Oh no, that was I think the, there less could only visitors. Be yeah. Less visitors again, still with true. hospital. But then, like after I think they went home a bit early, maybe after three, four, five, whatever days, Jacks yeah. home and everyone's meeting him. So again, yeah. like different, different yeah. scenario. But it's like. Yeah. That was also a bit weird. Like, because I just remember sitting, like, having dinner with your parents, sitting there with everyone, and then it's like, all right, we're going to go to the hospital. And they're like, okay. But, like, it almost feels like they don't even know who or what yeah. you're talking about. Which I, is- I feel like that's why everyone, like, everyone literally has a joke in my family that I'm a helicopter or worse. But this is why. Like, I'm literally a helicopter because I was like, she only had us for the first three weeks. I'm fucking, I don't know what's going on. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but yeah. everything. And then when, like, when we did have, when we did introduce her to people, they were like, hold on. They're like, oh, I want to feed her. And I was like, Absolutely not. Like yeah. you're not feeding her. Sorry, I can't let you because yeah. one, firstly, no one knew how, knew how to feed her. Feed her in a way that we had to because we had to like hold her upright, hold her neck a certain way, get the bottle in because I couldn't breastfeed because of my reduction, which was another fucking story. Um, yeah, there was like I think there's so many things that yeah. like contributed to it. It's not like you know, you're like I'm at home listening to them. Like what do you mean? No one has food, baby. But like little things like could have been tongue tied wasn't latching to a proper teat. Yeah. Um, had the worst form of reflux. So it's like, have to keep her upright, make sure she's burping. If you don't burp her, don't put her down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Couldn't go down after these... an hour and a half after feeding. There yeah. was no chance. Ended Zero. up being dairy intolerant, which we found out like two months later because kept drinking, getting all these red pimples, yeah, except like and rashes. Rashes and everywhere. And just whatever. Was... But like, do you know what I mean? So it was, it was a really like massive learning curve. And then I think that almost scared some people into being like, Oh, I don't want to hold her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like a, it's, it was like, a bit of a. I specifically remember Kayla, like, bless my sister, but she was like, I'm going to have feeding, I'm feeding, I'm feeding. And so she was so excited. She got the bottle and she was feeding her. And, like, while you feed, while you fed Gigi when she was really little, like, from like zero to like, I don't know, three months, yeah. you'd really have to watch her because she'd do this thing when, with the bottle. She'd go, like, and then stop. And then. Whatever milk went in, she would absolutely projectile if you weren't looking because you needed to pull the bottle out if you she did it. It was this weird thing that we, Mitch and I were like onto. But if you weren't looking, you weren't concentrating, she would do it and then she would choke straight away. And Kayla was feeding, Kayla was feeding her and then she did it. She choked, she projectiled and then it was coming out of her nose and then she just went really limp. And then Kayla goes, I don't know what to do and then gives me her and as I was looking at her, she was, her eyes were closed. Like she was, and I was like, what the fuck? I grabbed her, she had vomit out of her nose, vomit anywhere. And I was like, this is why no one can feed her because the, the, that gives me anxiety. I don't know what to do. Like, mm-hmm. I, and at that point I was like, oh, oh, like it was so, it's so, it was so scary. Yeah. I think doing all that kind of stuff. Now that you think about it, like that was, that was about put through the washing machine. Yeah. And, <laughs> I, th- and I think like, <laughs> obviously th- this happens to people. Like we're yeah. not the first couple that no. have had issues like this or, whatever you want to call it. But like in our experience, Anna was completely healthy. I'd had reflux for maybe like four to six weeks but and was medicated. None of done. these, do you know what I mean? And our only experience with a child was Anna at that yeah. point. So like us feeding Anna was normal. It was yeah. easy. It was, it was, do you know what I mean? It was whatever. So again, very new experience for us and, and everyone in the family. But yeah. yeah, I guess it was just a bit different. I think I, I think what I've, and I've, I've stopped doing it now, but I kept being like, why me? Why? Mm-hmm. Like why? I don't get mm-hmm. it. Like, I don't understand. I yeah. just, and I would annoy the shit out of me for so long. I was like, why me? But then like, now I'm like, dude, we have the best child. Like, mm. she's so funny. Like, you want to squish her because you're like, <laughs> and then like, you know what? It makes me like even like love our experience more because yeah. I feel like she loves us so much because mm-hmm. of all of that. Like, we were yeah. like, it was always us two. Feeding yeah. her through the night, always the two of us. Like, yeah, so freaking cute. Yeah, I agree. I just, I think obviously females and mothers go through a lot of hormonal and emotional stuff in birth and pregnancy oh, yeah. and it's just a whole roller coaster in itself. I just think... That's why I'm doing water birth next time. <laughs> I can t- my tears can go into the water. <laughs> you birth a submarine. Let's not go into that. Stop it. Oh my God. <laughs> um, no, but I think like, I don't know, if you know Lee and I, I think you're a firm believer of everything happens for a reason. 100%. And, you know, like while those times are hard, it was just... 
okay, it's not the end of the world. Mm. We're going to make it through. Like, let's just get through this. And then, I, like Leah's saying, I think it's made us really appreciate Gigi more than anything. I think people are like, oh, when are you going to have the next one? I'm like, dude, I'm just enjoying the moment right yeah, now. Yeah, like, like I, I want to enjoy her because bef- pre, yeah. G- like newborn stage Gigi was like, a tr- not, like yeah. it was awful. Like yeah. it can't, can't sugarcoat how hard it was for us. No, but it's hard. Yeah. Now it's like, it's a, it's yeah. actually the best. But like, she's, I th- well, she's going to be 16 months in about a week or so. Oh, and people like start planning for their second now effectively because yeah, most age gaps. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. I'm literally, and I'm not joking, Leah's like, should we have another? And I'm like, I literally have not even given it one thought. Yeah. Like genuine, not a serious thought in, in my head yeah. to be like, yeah, let's plan or whatever because I'm just like, it's dude, just, I'm just so into this moment. Like yeah. she walks around yelling, dada, or like when she wakes up, like dada. Yeah. Like, as if like, come <laughs> and so, get me out of bed, yeah. lazy fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like but sick. like, do you know what I mean? Like honestly, I think, and every, this is what I'm saying, like getting back to my point, like I think everything happens for a reason. I yeah. think this really... Not that we didn't appreciate pregnancy or wouldn't have appreciated it otherwise, but for me, the silver lining is, you know, some people can't have kids. I know, yeah. And some people don't get to experience yeah. I know. this pleasure in life. We have that experience. If we couldn't have another, do you know what? At least we've got Gigi and we've got to go through this. Um, again, that's when I, like, I'm coming from a very positive standpoint. So for me, it's just everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And at least we're able to appreciate her and like the... like. Leah and I are trying to work out with yes please this week, you know, like what are we doing? I'm like, dude, this is all for her. Yeah, let's just like, live. I could have all the money in the world. I really wouldn't change this person, wouldn't care, nothing would change. I'd just yeah. want to help Gigi, Gigi with whatever <laughs> way I could in life. She was like, Dad, I want to be a lawyer. Like, okay, how can I help? It's so funny because like, 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 I don't know about you guys, but like we had a friend that was like, oh, like, would you like, you know, would you help your kids? Would you spoil your kids? And my pre-baby, I was like, well, pre that big experience. I was like, nah, they can live on their own. They can do whatever. I'm not buying them anything. And now I'm like, I'll buy you any fucking thing that you want. You look at it, I'm getting it. Like if you want, I don't care. I don't care how I support you. I want to do everything I can for you. I don't care. Mm. But like, I think that it's it's funny because like you you just... It yeah. just makes you like... and Makes I, you appreciate her as a, as a human. Yeah, I think really. in life period, whether it's work, relationships, children, business, whatever it is, hard times really make you appreciate things. And I think this is what it's like, it's done. You know what I mean? Like when people are like, you can have another kid. I'm like, dude, not even on my radar. Like I'm just appreciating Gigi for right now. But yeah, I guess in a nutshell, that's our birth story. It is. Yeah. I think that, I think that like, it wasn't all, like there was, there was moments in there that was like, I feel a bit traumatized by them. Like the mm. oxygen, like the barium swallow test, like those things I remember and I'm really traumatized. But there was other times where I remember like us and that like Simone, I think it was Simone, Simone. Yeah. Yep. She, we were like pissing ourselves laughing about stories and she, in the nursery yep. like together, yep. like we were having so much fun. The nurses were amazing. Like, Yeah. I don't, I don't was, want us to paint a picture that it was all bad. Like was, there was, yeah, there was lots times of amazing there. moments. Yeah. Like when my family finally got to meet her, that was like the best yep. thing ever. It was yep. so nice. And then like, now moving forward, like every moment is amazing. Yeah. It's been hard, yeah, but like I wouldn't I wouldn't actually change the way we did things because no, like neither. thinking positively, we, I got to recover from a C-section. Mm-hmm. I got to sleep every night mm-hmm. for three weeks, mm-hmm. laying flat, my scar, like just like, you know, yeah. that helped me yeah. so much because I couldn't imagine like, I mean, you have to really, getting up and, you know, all night, being able to, you know what I mean? Like, that, would, mm-hmm. that, was, I, that was a huge... Yeah. Luck of mine, which is obviously like it's not like I would prefer to have taken it home, but that was like a good positive outcome that I was able to recover. Yeah. yeah. And then we, I think we learned things together. Like we learned how to change nappies. We learned how to bath her. We learned how to like, we Again, learned, yeah. we learned reflux together. We learned how to do all that stuff. Like I think. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know. Some people go home without any support. Yeah. I felt they like, do. and I felt like the support we got from the hospital was like wild. And like, your wild. family, when we got home as well. But yeah. Yeah, no, no, I agree. And not that we wouldn't have appreciated her had we not gone through this, but I think it just makes you yeah. just cherish these moments a, yeah. little bit, a little bit more. That's all. Yeah, like not now, that it's going to end or whatever, yeah. but it's just like, okay, like I'm just going to make the most of this. And Yeah, like I do it. I do remember like her sleeping on me at, in the early hours of the morning and I sat there fucking terrified, like shaking terrified that she was going to choke and vomit and I'd be by myself. Like yeah. do you remember? Because Mitch and I did this thing that we were like, why are both of us going to be tired? Like one of us, like we had two rooms like right next to each other. Mm-hmm. And I was like, she can sleep with one parent in that room and the other one can actually get a rest and then we can swap. Like, because we were bottle feeding. So that was our way of like 
this is how we're going to yeah. both try to manage. But, you know, if she was losing it, we'd both help, obviously, whatever. But if it was just feeding or whatever. But I do remember holding her, being like, I'm so fucking terrified right now. But now when she falls asleep on me now, do you remember the other night? She was like, it should be coffee. And I went in there and I held her or whatever. She was asleep on me. And I said to Mitch, I was like, see you in the morning. I'm not fucking leaving. Like, she was like, <laughs> Like, this is the best thing ever. She just sprawled on me and I was like, I couldn't think of nothing better than just yeah. sitting here with her, just laying her and she was, her little face was on me. She's going, oh, mama. And I was like, I am going to smack you in the face if you say that one more time because you're fucking so Like she was so sweet. And I was like, I this is like, this makes me appreciate it because like yeah. it was, you know, we we're watching a movie and I was like, it was interrupted by her crying, but I was like, I don't, I don't care. Like mm. I was here. And yeah. he was like, are you serious? And I was like, absolutely. See you in the morning. I will lay on this chair until she wants me to get off. And then 20 minutes later, she was like, get off me and I was like oh no but anyway like it, I feel like it did it really did make me appreciate it mm. I feel like it's just like makes you just love them love your little fam even more even more but anyway I I, I wanted to share it I know I'm sorry I cried everybody a million probably like eight times but I do think it's important to like just put it out there that some journeys don't go the way that you think and mm. if they don't it's okay because yeah. I've struggled with that for ages. I, I was like, I almost felt like embarrassed. And then after Kayla had Jacks, I was like, fuck, like again? Like, as in like Kayla went through the beautiful thing, went home and it was amazing. And I was mm-hmm. like, why didn't that? Like, why? Yeah. Ugh. But then I was like, no, that's silly. Like, that's too bad. Like, that's her journey. This is my journey. Like, that just is what it is. And I feel like now, if we did have a second child and it did happen again, I'd be way more prepared. Prepared. Well, I think... Um, that makes sense. Not to cut you off, but I think there was... Uh, Lady in the nursery that had her, se- there was a second child. Yes, I remember that. And very similar to what we went through yeah. in terms of reflux, whatever, DSATs. Her child went home with oxygen. Yep. And she was like, yep. And that, but that was her second child to have yeah. gone through everything and second child to go home with oxygen. Yeah. And she, like, it was, and this is why I think Lee is sharing it so much but like I think it was really nice to be able to because we were obviously you talk to mums in the yeah. nursery that's just what you do everyone's going through a shit time so you're yeah. not there because you're fucking thriving essentially so yeah. it was really good to see like we were unfortunately or fortunately whichever way you even look at it in the room when she got the news that Matilda made yep. that, I don't know whatever, I, I think it was a boy <laughs> Charlie <Yeah. laughs> but Charlie was going home with oxygen yeah and in that moment she broke down yeah and started that. hysterically crying and then a bit of what Leah was saying, like, oh, why does this have to happen to me? Yeah. Like, this is the second time around. I thought it'd be better, blah, blah, blah. But then I think it was late at night. So then went home next morning, like different person. Like Huge. flipped she the was switch. Like, she was like, fine. yep, done. I've been through it. It's only going to go for a year or because yeah. typically babies only stay on oxygen for six months to 12, a year, six to 18 is, months, yeah. whatever it is, depending on the condition. Um Yep, we're going to get through it. Let's do it again. Her husband was there. They were just pumped. The other child was there and they were going to take Charlie home and get through it. Do you know what I mean? And it was really, I think, really, really good for us to see that mindset to be like, do you know what? That's happened to her twice. Yeah. This, Our yeah. situation is not that bad. Yeah. So we, like, we can get through it, obviously. But it's it's really nice to be able to see other people not struggling, but like as a, almost like a role model in that situation. Yeah, she to was be like, Fuck, I can look up to you guys, and I can have the same attitude as you guys. Yeah. We'll make it work. Like we make everything else in our lives work. Yeah. Why can't we make this? She work? was a baller. I remember her. She was great. She, she was, was like cool. whatever. Like she was a legend. cool, easy. Get him up. Like and she, she was, was. I think she was a maybe a nurse or volunteer at the, yeah. at the hospital or something like that. And like to see her breakdown was like fuck. Like she's probably the it's, most capable person yeah. to look after a child yeah. that has something wrong yeah, and she's still breaking down. Like we're all still human. And I think um, my biggest quote in life is comparison is the thief of joy. 100%. And, you know, like whether it's business or relationship or babies or whatever it is, like you cannot compare journeys because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And, Absolutely. you know, I think it's really hard with things like social media. TikTok is a bit different, but like Instagram effectively is a highlight reel of people's lives. They're not yeah. sitting there going oh man, I just lost this baby. Like no one really wants to share that. Yeah, cause it, because it's, Cause it's vulnerable. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, in, And that's where it's a bit hard. So, um, you know, I think it is very refreshing, if you want to call it that, to know that, you know, people do struggle. Yeah. And we're not the first people to have a child, have a DSAT. We won't no. be the last. <laughs> yeah. But if we can help people... Just in whatever maybe in way, their journey, just like it's not. Gonna, then we're here for it. Yeah. But again, like we just want to share our message and what we went through, and you know, if we can help with other people's journeys, then so 100%. be it. Or, but it's not abnormal. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. even our pediatrician was saying that 
um, in the last five years, the number of babies going home with oxygen yeah, has increased, has heat, increased so much. And it, it just life. makes you very grateful for things. Like now, obviously because we experienced it for a short period of time, but if we see like a baby on oxygen at a cafe. I just want to give it a little cuddle. You just, what? yeah, you almost want to go up to the parents and like give them a hug. Yeah. Like, I get it. Whereas before, yeah, like not to sound like an ungrateful <laughs> fucking twat, but you'd be like, oh. What's that? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like yeah, pre pre having a child, not understanding it. And yeah, you just not, not understanding understand what it. But that like, means. Yeah, yeah, like, do you know what I mean? Like, they're people too. 100%. Yeah, they have emotions. They yeah. struggle. So, yeah. yeah, just little things like that. But I think yeah. it's a massive learning curve. And pregnancy is far from perfect. It's so far from perfect. Like, it's a very raw and hectic thing. Yeah, <laughs> that we go through in life. But Are we nodding our head to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's many many things, it's but yeah. Um, it's crazy and it's not perfect and yeah. life's not perfect. But do you know what? You just got to keep on going and 100%. turn up every day and put a smile on your face. And- I have 10 children. Um, <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that out. I'm glad I got that out because I feel like I just needed to like just... Eh, just vent. Just vent almost. Yeah. Vent and cry. That's what I do every day and I like it. <laughs> do not do that every day. <laughs> I do that every day. No, you don't. Um, all right. I think let's let's just... That's it. That's that's, that's, it that's our birth that's our birth story. We have some like our funny questions that we're going to really we rush end through. On our funny questions, yeah. I forgot that we even had questions. Oh my god! Did you god. have questions? Yeah, let's, questions? Let's run it because I think we've been going for like fifty five minutes. That's you right. guys like hurry the fuck up. Um, <laughs> so I'm listening, to listening to your sad stories. So let's go. We've got three questions. We do this every single time except one episode, which was we should have done in that episode. Mm. But we have questions and if you get the answer wrong, you eat something gross. And I'm so excited about today because I bought things that. I love and then like I just want Mitch to start loving things, you know? But we have his look. Why are you putting it? Why are you putting it? Oh, I was like, I was like, what? All right. Should we get the food? Yeah. Also, you guys are going to vom because I can see there's a Barossa packet in there, which means that's that's (laughs) some sort of comic. We have not learned. (laughs) You saw last time I ate things that should be cold. (laughs) That's cold. Lucky because it's freezing outside. Right. If we're in Queensland, it'd be warm. Do you want to just call out what we have while I get it out? We've got sauerkraut. We've got pancetta. Pancetta? What? Eggplant strips. The fuck is that? Obviously, you don't know what this is. Quince paste. You idiot. That tastes delicious. Oh, I thought you didn't like it for some reason. Am I allowed to eat that? What is it? Chorizo free range bites. Are they allowed raw? To eat it. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah no, nah, just eat it. <laughs> No, it was next to the salami, so oh, I would okay. assume. Okay. And what's Cheers. that? Is that pickles or gherkins? Pickles. Whole cucumbers. Yeah. Actually. Basically pickles. All right. You want to go first? I'll go first because I'm going <laughs> to... So the question that I want to get this... We're going to go pickle. Oh, yeah. I oh, did you hear that? Pickles. Mm. I love pickles. Anyone else like How pickle, good are pickle pickles? Juice? Everyone at home? Mm. What the fuck? Pickle juice, delicious. What's what's that about? It's so yum. I could eat, drink that all day. Um, <laughs> That's disgusting. While well, well, talking on the what? You it's can just so good. Crack it open and drink the pickle juice. Oh, it's the best. Have some manners. <laughs> no one else Get can it drink out. it. <laughs> yeah, Literally, use your use manners. Your manners. <laughs> That's my pickles. I can do what I want. Um, okay, my question number one. Talking mm. about the birth story, pregnancy. What was my worst symptom? Heartburn. Wow, <laughs> damn it. I did have ribs. Do, do you have heartburn? Oh, it's the freaking worst. I, I was just trying to search my brain for if there's a different technical term that you're going to pull me up on. Like no, no, no. It was heartburn. No, whorehand. No, no. I'm going to eat that after. It was definitely heartburn. That was the worst okay. thing ever. I will try and avoid the chorizo because we don't know if that's allowed. <laughs> I don't know if it's cooked. Charlie Kerno, our boy. Yeah, boy. From Carlton. Yeah. I know who Charlie Kerno is. Yeah, you just Charlie. yell at every fucking Thursday night. Charlie. Anyway. What number does he wear? 11. No. Oh, 30. What? Okay. <laughs> Sucks to be you. I don't know why the pancetta would pancetta. be. A, is that, are you allowed to eat pancetta? Well, I don't know. I would is assume that you meant to cook it. Are you? Ready to eat product. You just say ready to eat. Oh, uh, my boy's out of the barossa hooks me up. Why are you going to make it all the, the fattiest things to, to get? I can't it's open not meant it. to be things. Oh my God, that's a big ass knife here. Thank you. We Thank were prepared. Thank you for preparing this. <laughs> Something I prepared earlier. Something you prepared earlier. Does anyone want some warm pancetta? If you could please speak into the mic. Sorry. I'm just getting some foul pancetta. Oh, no, I like pancetta, but not Do you? Not no, no, eat the fat bit. Oh, what's that? Tastes like ham. Tastes fine, but I just don't want to eat the fat. No, it's for you. 
Okay. It tastes fine, but okay. not about eating fat. You know? Beautiful. All right. You know, One yeah. down, two that to was go. Oily. Okay. You're not going to get this right, so I'm going to get you some sauerkraut. Um, how many children do I want? Five. Wrong. Three. Right. Did, can I get confirmation that you wrote three? No. I didn't write anything. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some more. No, we're not doing... It's, it's literally cabbage. It's just, it's, you like it, trust me. We'll do a Leah size portion. Oh, you would like it. You like cabbage. No? It's okay. It's so good. I could eat that every day. Yum. It's intense. I have a sick obsession, obsession with kimchi right now. I've eaten like... The hot, like, there's a container that's like this big in the fridge and I just eat it with a fork every day. The best. <sighs> Out of 10. Do you like it? Yeah. What else did I get? Quince okay. paste okay. and this weird chorizo thing that I'm not eating. Mitch is my name. <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> is that how you started the question? <laughs> Mitch is my name. That's what I wrote. I was named after a movie character. Oh, I don't freaking know. Who was that named after? Um, old and beautiful. I don't know. That's where everyone. You suck. I don't know. Who? The answer is Mitch from Baywatch. Oh, okay. Baywatch. No, no. I, David Hasselhoff. Yeah, I fucking knew that. Actually, he's a did. hit in the bloody. Yeah, I knew that. I'm not eating 1990s. that because that looks raw. Yeah, we'll go Quince paste. Quince paste is delicious, though. Just eat it. We're not here for to hear you it get like, out of this stuff when you're you getting things wrong. Have you tried Quince paste before, no. love? I think it's just marinated pig feet. No, it's not marinated pig feet. It's literally a quince. <laughs> like it's... Next up, I'm going to do chicken feet. Don't you dare. What about that restaurant that we were going to go to and they put the feet in it? Why would you do that? Mm. It tastes oh, good. Oh, yummy. It tastes so... Don't lie. You don't like it. I don't, I don't, he's never had it before. He's like, it tastes like jam. What is it? A quince. What's a quince? <laughs> No, I don't want it. I'm you not, like I it. No, I didn't lose. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like figs. Okay. Like You could have just said a fig. Okay, it's a quince, not a fig. It's a quince. But anyway. I've ne- why have I never seen a quince before? <laughs> it's fair enough. It's a fair, fair Come question. On. Fair question. Where is he? <laughs> I agree with you, my love. What's he look like? I agree with you. Um, <laughs> what is my favourite trait of yours? Wait, let me write it down. Because... Like... Like... Is it something physical or is it something... No, no physical. Well, yeah, I mean, it can be anything, but I'll write down so that I can't change the answer. I would say my sense of humour. Damn it, I wrote funny. <laughs> Am I three from three? <laughs> yeah. This is a no, world record. No, you lost the first one, the second Did one. Did I? Yeah, the kids thing. Yeah, but that was subjective. No. I think she made that up. No, you I didn't. write it down. Yeah, I didn't, but I did want three. Because you three. say two and I you said three. You want an odd number. Yeah. In what world do people want an odd number? Well, if we can do have you want four. Three? Yeah, two. <laughs> it's like two two is perfect. Enough. Four would be no, cute. Unless, unless it's one, I just don't understand like three, five. It's just weird for the car dynamic. The car dynamic. Well, no, I get from maybe like the because everyone three has that little max, car. It's like five. Uh, you're like buying a new car. Yeah, two cars Kia to Carnival. go to lit. Yeah, they are cool. Cars. Joey, yeah, <laughs> so Joey don't want a Kia Carnival. Right. <laughs> They're yeah. pretty fucking sick. You may or may not get this right. <laughs> okay, last one. Let's do this. 90210 is the postcode for what suburb? Beverly Hills. Damn, I are really you wanted for to. Real? I really thought you'd forget. <laughs> you asked me what the postcode was at like. No, no, I know. I know. I've done it previously. Yeah. No, no, no. But I asked the other way around. I really thought you'd get confused. No, I wouldn't get confused because okay. that is literally the one thing you say like daily. Okay. <laughs> Let me try one more. <laughs> okay, one more. <laughs> I'll have to eat me. This but is really going to show Leah up. <sighs> what is. <laughs> The capital. No, fuck off. I don't want to do that. Okay, anyway. Oh, um, no, 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 no. Of Western Australia. I don't, I don't care. I don't want to do <laughs> Leah, come on. Okay, there's this running joke no, in my family. No, it's not a joke. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I'll the top question. of my head. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? No, I don't. Listen. What is the capital of Western Australia? <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean I you don't know? I genuinely, like, in, off the top of my head, I have no fucking idea. Take a guess. Fucking Perth? Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, but I was like, I don't want to say it. But guys, listen, there's one thing in this world that I don't know, <laughs> and it's geography. I have no fucking idea. 
I will tell you one quick It's so quick. weird that they're called South Australia, South Australia when we're like in the north of Australia. No, we're fucking not, you <laughs> idiot. That's so, I know some things, but I literally, I just, for some reason, I know the answers, but it makes me feel so, I get hot and sweaty. My hands are clammy when it, when people talk about geography. I don't know what it is. And people are like, what's 110 times 36? I'm like, I can do that eventually. But if someone, <laughs> With a calculator. <laughs> but if someone asks me, what is the capital of fucking Greenland? I don't know. I don't know anything. Like, Vinland. Vinland. <laughs> no, I know nothing. Like, I'm not, like, I swear uh, I know this one teacher and I don't, she didn't one. teach me anything. What is the no, capital no, I don't of South Australia? Oh, like Barossa? No. <laughs> <laughs> Adelaide, obviously. What about? No, that's it. One right. more, one more, no, one no, more. No, 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 no more. What no about more. New South Wales? I don't know. What? I don't know. You don't? <laughs> 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 Are you asking me no, if it's I'm Sydney? Sydney? It is Sydney. I'm Sydney. I don't want to oh, do it anymore. Oh, my days. You should feel my hands. No, I don't want to clammy. feel my hands. Clammy, clammy, clammy. It's maths and geography. I can't do it. I could do anything else. I could tell you a story about the fucking first Prime Minister of Australia, but I could not. <laughs> <laughs> Pull that I one out of the bank. Yeah. Who was it? Edmund Barton, my you guy. You researched that. <laughs> no, because I did an assignment on it. That's what I remember. I remember nothing important. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm going to, like, when I'm at the airport, I'm like, holy fuck, I have no idea where I am. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen. The joys. Yeah, but we just, we live life with what we know, okay? And I don't need to know geography. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> All right, we are done. I'm I'm super happy with that. I yeah. feel like I didn't cry as much as I thought I was going to. Fair. But I, I feel like, yeah, that. I'm, I'm happy about that because I thought I was going to bowl, but at least I only used three tissues. That was nothing. Next up, we have a surprise guest. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Um, we will let you know to, like whenever we film another yeah. next surprise. But um, so fun. Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry for me crying. Hopefully it didn't make you... And egg- hopefully it didn't make you, you drive home sad, you know? No, no drive home is always positive. And uh, to our Greek people driving home, egg in it. Yasu. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. bye.